my name is John. Today we're going to talk about my 2008 900 horsepower BMW 135. sketchy going down the road. <laughs> I like the black one all around more, but I like the ability to drive this one and not really, it's not that I don't care about it, but I, I know this car a lot better. Uh, like I've been to so many events in this and done so much street drifting and stuff in it. I, I know this car better. That was a cop. I didn't know if that was a cop, so I was like, oh sh. <laughs> I can see you enjoy this car a lot more. Yeah. Oh, so, how long have you owned this car for? Um, about the same as the other one, three or four years, but this one has been a part like top to bottom, you know, significantly more than the other one. So, this is a 95 BMW M3. I've owned it for about three or four years as well, about as long as I've had the uh, black BMW. Um, I bought this as a shell, so it was like a completely bare rolling chassis, no front end, no interior, any of that kind of stuff. For about a year, we had a 5.0 V8 in it. The 5.0 blew up six times, so we kind of got a little irritated with reliability on the V8 stuff. What we put in it was a stock M52 motor out of a 328i. Uh, we basically, found a 328 sedan in a field. Uh, we bought the 328 for 500. We pulled the motor out of it, slapped it in um, NA. We ran it stock with no turbo or anything for about two years. Just got to the point of where it was getting pretty boring being a stock NA motor. We pieced together a turbo kit for it. It's got a Gen 2 6466, all vibrant couplers, piping, uh, vibrant intercooler core. It's got a TRM, I think it is, Motorsports uh, tuned ECU with 80 pound injectors. Depending on what day you catch it, it's at 10 or 12 pounds on the 64, so it's probably low to mid 400s. And like I said, we have not ever opened this motor whatsoever, other than we, when we took the oil pan off, like we checked the rod bearings and all that, they seem totally fine. So we slapped this on and it's been fine ever since. The front, uh, these are BBS RC wheels. I'm not exactly sure what they came off of, but there's some kind of OEM BMW BBS wheel. And then the rear is uh, the, I believe they're also BBSs. They are OEM BMW style 19 uh, two-piece wheels. It's got BC, just like the other one, it's got BC coilovers all the way around. Uh, the front has a SLR Ultra full tubular angle kit, upgraded lollipop bushings, all that kind of stuff. The rear is a welded 391. It's like an automatic 328i diff uh, that's been welded and then it has the M3 cups and M3 axles and everything on it. Solid diff and subframe bushings, diff brace. So this one also has Sparco Evo 2s just like the other car. It has the same exact seats. Amazon $70 shifter. Uh, it's a committed service brand Hydro with Chase Bay's line kit and then it has a Chase Bay's dual Willwood Cowper uh, rear setup on it. That's a um, Macaw Motorsports rear seat delete. 
Macaw Motorsports um, gauge panel. It's got AM wideband, oil pressure, uh, and then a glow shift boost gauge. Uh, it's a Sparco steering wheel and hub. And then it's got a custom uh, Alexander fabrication cage. He basically builds all the cages around here for most of the drift cars and like SCCA cars and stuff. So when I bought this as a roller, the first thing I had it do was I, I took it over to him and had him cage it. And then my buddy Sutton, who runs um, custom painting and uh, pinstriping, he pinstriped the cage in pink and white for me. It's pretty old now, so after a couple of years it's faded, but it still looks really cool. You won't see many pinstripe roll cages rolling around. I want to say I just had it on somewhere between 23 and 25 pounds. I didn't look at the gauge. So you're changing the boost level for oh, the boost pressure right now on the spot yeah. in your phone. Yeah. And if I go to like which map I want, it goes all the way up to eight. Uh, like just the eBay pads and rotors. Well, as long as they work, right? Yeah, it was like 200 bucks. <laughs> the trans mounts, the subframe, the diff, and the motor mounts are all either poly or solid. That's why it's like pretty vibrating. So with this new turbo, do you do you prefer this over the 68? Is there any pros and cons between the two? I think they're they're pretty much about the same because they have the uh, the same backside, so the spool is about the same. It seems to light up about pretty much exactly like the 68 did. And at what RPM does it kick in? About 4,000. Yeah, which <laughs> isn't great, you know, in no. comparison to some V8s. But for this size turbo on a kind of small motor, it's not really that bad. And what do you rev it up to? With the stock head, it revs to like 7,000. Previously, before this turbo, we had a ported head on it with uh, Shrit cams, and it could rev to 8,200 with that. Um, right. We'll eventually put it back on, but it's right now it's just that stock head. Early. Yeah, it was it was crazy at that. At one point, the 68, uh, so it made, like I said, it made the 940 at 37, I, I want to say it was 37 pounds. The highest we had that turbo on the street was 42, and it, I mean, it, it would blow the tires off a lot worse than it'll do right now but mm -hmm. it was definitely pretty good on the street we hope you know i hope to make a lot more with this one it's just the process of turning it up going out logging a bunch so it's a n54 obviously the first thing everybody is going to see uh, in the the center of all of it is a dock race top mount turbo kit uh, it's now on a gen 2 7275 uh, it's t4 it's a 96 backside on the turbo. I believe it's three and a half inch exhaust turbo back. It's custom three inch intercooler piping with three inch uh, vibrant HD clamps on all of the connections. It's got a thousand horse, like just off the shelf uh, CSF intercooler. As far as the fueling and everything goes up here, it's got the stock direct injectors. And then on the other side, you've got a secondary rail of 6,000 cc port injectors. Those are fed by the factory high pressure fuel pump down on the other side of the motor, which has a helix overdrive pump on it as well. So that's basically like a booster pump for the high pressure fuel pump. It is fed by two 450 in tank fuel pumps, Precision Raceworks 
fuel pressure regulator and 6AN fuel line kit with the uh, additional return line. Some other cool stuff is like it's got a forward facing black market parts intake manifold. It's got Vargas turbo uh, external oil cooler kit which leads down to a, I believe it's a 19 row or maybe a 20 row Setrab uh, front mount oil cooler. It's right behind the bumper so you can't see it. Custom M18 valve cover, M18 coil pack cover. So the front has BC coilovers. There's not really too many options out there as far as drag coilovers for the front. So, you know, that's pretty much just what we're working with right now. The rear has, they are custom Viking shocks and springs from Vader Solutions. It's like a, a drag setup. The rear end is a Seems Legit Garage uh, 88 Mustang setup. It's got a Seems Legit Garage custom, I believe it's a three inch aluminum drive shaft, Vader Solutions uh, rear drag suspension. Uh, they're G-Force, I believe they're level three axles. It's got billet control arms, uh, 1M toe and camber arms, and then it's got Vader Solutions uh, 15 inch conversion kit, which consists of a smaller uh, rotor and then it's a Willwood caliper it's so you can fit you know the 15 inch slicks so we don't need it right now but so the wheels all the way around are apex arc 8 the fronts are i believe 18 by 8.5 the rears are 17 by 9 or 9.5 i can't remember offhand uh, as far as rear tires they are toyo r888r uh, 275 40 17s in the interior, these are Sparco Evo 2 seats. Um, they're on Sparco rails and planted brackets. In here, it's the RTD shifter. It's billet, I believe this is the V1 RTD. Uh, VAC Motorsports uh, fire extinguisher mount. Uh, these are MTech shift knob and boot. eBay radio, but it has all of our like uh, diagnostics, coding and tuning capabilities to do it right on the radio. If you can see in the back, there's a Nelson racing wheel, carbon fiber rear seat delete. Probably saves, I don't know, 80 or 100 pounds with all the rear seat gone.